Dear students, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And this is an online chemistry tutorial. Okay, you, you can access my previous videos either by visiting my homepage or from my YouTube channel. Okay, today I am going to discuss with you some basic concepts in organic chemistry such as hyperconjugatory effect and its characteristics and its application. As you know, in conjugated system, electron move from one p orbital to other p orbital or from pi orbital to another pi orbital which are aligned parallel. In the same way, electron can jump from p orbital to sp3 hybridized orbital to even that is not parallel. So, this type of conjugation is a non-normal one, hence it is called hyperconjugation. So, in alkyl substituent, when an alkyl substituent with an alpha hydrogen atom are on within carbon carbon double bond, you know, can act as an electron donor to the pi system. So, the alkyl substituent can donate an electron, this with alpha hydrogen can donate electron to the C double bond C, that is pi bond. And in conjugated bond, Normally, pi pi or pi p orbitals get overlapped, but in hyperconjugation, sigma pi or sigma p or incomplete p orbital or vacant p orbital overlap. So, that is the difference between conjugation and hyperconjugation. And in this example, you have a double bond here and alpha hydrogen atom. So, hyperconjugation means this CH sigma bond can interact with this pi bond, can undergo delocalization like this. Here, this uh, hyperconjugative structure of this alkene, right? And this kind of delocalization of sigma electron through conjugation with pi electron is known as hyperconjugation. And this effect was observed by to sign this Baker Nathan and this is called named after this scientist. And here in this structure, you can see that the hydrogen is not attached to the carbon. So, it is called it is exactly like a resonance, but there is no bond between hydrogen and carbon. So, it is called no bond resonance. Okay, then next one, what are the structural requirement? for hyperconjugative effect. One compound should have at least one sp2 hybrid carbon atom. Okay, It should have one sp2 hybridized carbon atom that is alkene and adene that is or benzene or carbocation or free radical that is having sp2 hybridized structure. Second one and there should be some alpha hydrogen atom on alpha carbon. So, that is the another condition. So, these two conditions should be satisfied. And there are many kinds of hyperconjugative uh, effect and I am giving three examples here. First case is the interaction between sigma CH bond and pi bond. For example, in propene, here you have a you know sigma CH bond. This can uh, in this CH bond can interact with the pi bond and this is alpha hydrogen atom this can interact with this pi bond but in this case there is no alpha hydrogen atom so there is no hyperconjugate effect and the last example here you have a benzene it is sp2 hybridized carbon atom this is alpha carbon atom and alpha hydrogen can interact with this one so these are the example for such types and second type sigma CH bond can interact with the vacant p orbital. Here, this is the alpha car hydrogen atom, this is vacant p orbital, this can undergo delocalization. Here, you have a 3 alpha hydrogen atom, here, you have 9 alpha hydrogen atom, 3 plus 3 plus 3. So, such bond can be delocalized. And this can be pictorially represented like this. Here you have a CH sigma electron can overlap, you know, with empty p orbital. All these three 
hydrogens, electron C, H sigma bond electron can overlap similarly. Okay, third one, third type of interaction, sigma CH bond can interact with incomplete p orbital. That is, uh, you know, this radicals, that is incomplete p orbital radicals. So, this alpha hydrogen can delocalize with these radicals. And second example, uh, this is having six alpha hydrogen atom. And in first case, it is having three alpha hydrogen atom. And this one is a hyperconjugative structure of propene and this is propene and this pi bond can in delocalized with the CH sigma bond. So that is, uh, uh, this is the first hyperconjugative structure and this one second, third and fourth. There are four hyperconjugative st structure and this is, you know, CH sigma bond transfers electron to the carbon and CC bond and H get press positive charge and this become double bonded and then this double bond break and become single bonded and this carbon get a negative charge. So similarly second hydrogen atom can undergo the same process and third structure fourth structure is out of this hydrogen atom. So all these three alpha hydrogen atom can undergo hyperconjugative structure. So here there is no hydrogen HC bond, so that is called no bond resonance. And what are the evidence for this such, such hyperconjugative structures? One evidence is the bond length of CC bond. It was found that it is 1.48 and so on. And actual C single bond C bond length is 1.54 and the C double bond C is 1.34. But we observed and uh, the observed bond for this propane is 1.48 that is the average of this single and double bond that means the structure is uh, you know the bond is due to the hyperconjugative structure and apart from that dipole moment it clearly telling there is a dipole moment in c uh, the propane that means it is uh, uh, this dipole moment is due to this charge okay and this is the orbital overlap of propane okay uh, what are the applications of uh, hyperconjugation and one is the stability of alkene you can tell for example one butene and two butene and based on inductive effect you can tell that what what, what which one would be the stable one based on inductive effect? You know, the, because uh, it is having uh, a larger ethyl group and it may confused whether uh, you cannot explain it based on uh, inductive effect. So, hyperconjugate effect, if you have a greater number of alkyl group attached to the double bond, you know, the greater number of alkyl group, here you have only one alkyl group, here you have two alkyl group. So, if you have a greater number of alkyl group, you get, you know, the more number of alpha hydrogen atom, then you get a more number of hyperconjugative structures. For example, in one butene, you have an one alkyl group, you have only two alpha hydrogen atom. Whereas, two butene, you have a two alkyl substituents and you have a six alpha hydrogen atom, okay, right? Then this one uh, is having more contributed sexes, so 2-butene will be more stable. And the alkene stability order is like this. You can see that when you have a more number of alkyl group attached to a double bond, the more uh, hyperconjugative structure you get. Here you have only three, uh, one alkyl substituent with a 3 alpha hydrogen. Here you have two alkyl substituent with a 6 alpha hydrogen. 3 alkyl substituent with a 6, uh, 9 alpha hydrogen and 4 here with a 12 alpha hydrogen. So, with increase in number of alkyl groups, stability of alkane will increase. So, in alkyl and this is the, you know, uh, normal plus I group electron density releasing effect order and based on inductive effect, the uh, electron density will be more higher for tertiary butyl compound than methyl. This is the order. Methyl or methyl will be less 
you know, inductive. Whereas in hyper, if you consider the hyperconjugation effect, the electron releasing effect is in reverse order, and this is having more hyperconjugate effect than D day than isopropyl than tertiary butyl have no iso no hyperconjugate effect. Why? Because it is having three alpha hydrogen atom. This is having two alpha hydrogen. This is having one alpha hydrogen atom, and there is no alpha hydrogen here. So the effect of hyperconjugate effect is stronger also than compared to inductive effect. Why? Because inductive effect actually it is a partial delocalization of charges, but hyperconjugate effect it is a total transfer or delocalization of the charge. And next question is based on this uh, hyperconjugate effect which is more stable propene or 1-butene. And based on inductive effect, we can say clearly say that this is a, a ethyl group which is plus having plus I effect than methyl group. So based on inductive effect, we can say actually one butene will be more stable than one propane, but that is not true. And propane is more stable than one butene. The reason is the hyperconjugate effect. Okay, here it is having three alpha hydrogen in propene, here only two alpha hydrogen in one butene. Next one, in the case of benzene, benzene, you know, the, the hyperconjugative structure of benzene can be drawn like this and we can explain uh, uh, the orientation of benzene towards the electrophilic substitution at ortho and para position. Okay, so Toluene, this toluene, uh, when you are doing electrophilic substitution, it direct the electrophile to the ortho and para position. What is the reason? Because the ortho and para position is having high electron density and this can be explained based on hyperconjugate effect. Okay. And this is having, uh, you get more evidence from this uh, out of this example, when you do electrophilic substitution of this di-substituted benzene and having one substituent tertiary butyl and another substituent methyl, if you nitri nit nitrated this one by using nitrating mixture and you get ni nitration product at the ortho position of methyl group. Why? It is not coming to the you know, ortho position of tertiary butyl group. The reason is actually there are two reasons. One is hyperconjugate effect because this methyl F, uh, group in has having three alpha hydrogen and there is no alpha hydrogen for tertiary butyl. So this is having uh, due to hyperconjugate effect it direct the ortho position of this methyl group. Second one bulky tertiary group can hinder the approach of electrophile. Okay, that's the uh, uh, application of uh, hyperconjugate effect and you can uh, also uh, uh, tell the stability of toluene and ethyl benzene, ethyl benzene and isopropyl benzene and uh, tertiary butyl benzene based on hyperconjugate effect also that is I am not showing here. And in summary, you can say the de, what is de, hyperconjugation is the delocalization of sigma electron through conjugation with pi electron. That is hyperconjugation. And what are the structural requirement? A compound should at least have one sp2 hybrid carbon atom that is alkene, arene, or carbocation or free radical. Second requirement, alpha carbon should have at least one alpha hydrogen atom. And its application is you can, uh, dis we can discuss the stability of alkene or we can predict the stability of alkene based on hyperconjugate effect. And if you have a greater number of alkyl group attached to the double bond, there will be greater stability of alkene because of its increase in more contributing structures. Uh, that's all. Thank you for watching.